So friends, June 2015, I'm starting my first YouTube channel in Polish, which was uh, closed, banned by YouTube, then it was opened, they said sorry, it was just an error of our AI, and in November I started uploading in English, 2015 November. My studio was at first white, and then I'm, I painted the, the walls black because I like I like it very much, as you can see, black and white and green are my colors. But then I thought that GoPro Hero 4, which, I, which I've been using since the beginning of the channel till today, till now, wasn't really doing well in terms of the lighting and brightness, so I decided to paint it again white, which didn't help at all. And so I bought my Panasonic Lumix G7, I guess which is the best camera for the money, which does great job indoors. I'm just gonna buy wider lens and it's gonna be cool and great. And so here we are. This is our new little home with a studio. The studio is tiny, 10.3 square meters. Uh, I'm gonna have my bikes on the walls. I'm gonna have my indoor trainer stand like training uh, place area here, servicing area there, and I'm, I'll be building some nice garage just on the other side of this wall. Surroundings, mm, beautiful, lovely, and we're gonna be meeting at least Tuesdays, with trainings, and Fridays with the show. Uh, and so, I'm just gonna show you some paint work today, and we're gonna do the first little project, which is the bike cockpit adjustments. Let's do this. A little challenge. I'm going to paint the ceiling with black uh, paint, uh, two layers, and then I'm going to put, first I'm going to put the, the tape on the walls, two tapes on each corner, because this is going to be grey up till, till here, then white and grey again. So, Two tapes here, two tapes on each of those uh, corners. How much time is gonna take for me? Two layers there and just the tape around the whole studio. 10.3 square meters. Put those numbers in the comments, we'll see. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna put you here outside. Beautiful places, believe me. It's clean, it's 9 past 2 p.m. You don't see it anyway. Get the game.
one of my favorite parts. two layers there and this is how it looks like. I'm loving this, I'm loving this and now it's time to turn to the old studio probably from the last episode there. The old SB studio, guys, the cockpit, uh, mostly about cross country, we're talking mostly about the cross country. This is 720 millimeters uh, handlebars and if you're subscribed to my channel for at least a year, you know I'm not a great fan of wide bars, especially for the cross country. Why so? First off, I don't feel that for 29er I need more leverage for, for turning because that's not how you turn your bike. That's number one. Number two, that this is my opinion and my feelings. Number two, I guarantee you I'll be faster with um, less millimeters here, with a narrower one, in tight single tracks when you need to uh, maneuver around the, uh, the, the trees. That makes a difference. And three, it's also important for me, I feel like my wrists don't work in the natural way on the wider bars, especially standing off the saddle. So when I'm, when I'm put, putting more uh, power on the pedals of the saddle, and then you see, this is what changes with the wrists. The wider it is, it needs to, you see, change this angle here. And on the wide, wider bars, when I'm off the saddle and I'm swinging the bike, it just hurts. And it's not that I'm, I'm not accustomed to, to the bars, because since we got 29ers, I've been testing 20, 29ers. 72 centimeters I'm gonna replace with hmm, 60 centimeters, uh, because we still have three weeks, 21 days to the nationals, XC nationals in Poland. So uh, it's a good time to change something, tweak something on your bike and get used to the new position. So we're gonna change the bars and then I will tell you how I adjust everything. By the way, this is uh, KCNC SC Bone, 117 grams, 600 millimeters. I'm removing my Sigma computer bar fly. Now three millimeters for the grips two and a half the money to look out the housing is too short in order to remove this one it doesn't open i'm going to release the handlebar and then move it but first the brakes and the shifter And the shifter, five millimeters high key, so I've been using two, two and a half, three, four, and five, just for the handlebars. Ta da! The weight of the Merida Expert 7. 120 millimeters, that's 230 grams about. First off, think about how your housings will go. You don't want to mess with it. You want to have nice and clean cockpit. I'm going to pre-assemble the handlebars. Your grips, right, left, you want to have your bolts on the right side.
Okay, come at the front. First, the position of all the elements, all the shifters and levers on the handlebars, and then the right angle, the right height, if you will. Uh, the problem with longer uh, levers, braking levers, if you have, let's say, Shimano Altus, the one I had, the longer one on the green, green um, froggy from the last year, Merida 500 Lite, is that when you want to have your indexing finger breaking it, you need to move it further to the center of your, uh, so to the stem, to the center of your handlebars, and then it can mess a little bit with the shifters and with the uh, seat post lever or your fork lever. In this case, this is the cheapest one finger operate, operated uh, brake. This is the MT501 from Shimano, and this is great. As you can see, my palms are almost at the end of the handlebars, just, just as I'm riding and now it feels great. If you have longer ones, it would push you to use two fingers. This is not the best technique of braking. The best technique of braking is with one finger only. Now I'm just going to measure, making sure that the, hand, the, the levers are uh, positioned just ideally perfectly and then we'll see the rest. Now the position is perfect, so I'm just going to slightly tighten the the bolt because sometimes we, we tweak different things. Then the shifter, my shifter feels perfectly. It needs to be moved just to the edge of, of the clamp of your of my braking levers and then the um, the lever to the, the lockout looks great too. This is it, this is my position on my of my palms uh, looking great. One finger there and uh, the thumb here. I would like to have uh, this shifter slightly moved down. I cannot do it because uh, the braking lever is on, its, is on the way. I don't have an additional adjustment right here. So I'm gonna leave it like that. If you had the longer braking levers, you could probably put the clamp on the inside and the clamp of the shifter on the outer side. Then you would have a little bit more space to move it around. I'm gonna fasten everything and we'll, uh, and we'll see the angle. But for that, I need to put the bike on the ground and sit on the saddle. I'm sitting on the bike, I'm on the right position and I see now that uh, from the perspective when the bike was on the stand, it looked different. Now I can see that my everything on the handlebars is a little bit too high. Why is it so? Look at this angle here. You don't want to have such an angle uh, of your wrist because this joint will hurt when you are riding uh, not only on the mountain bike, even on the on a cross bike or, or fitness bike, that would, would be the case. You perhaps don't want to have a complete straight line with your arm and the palms, but it should be just slightly bent, not too much, just slightly will be natural because you want to also have some support. So this is making me support, giving me support, but this is too much. So everything should go down. That's why uh, I have my handlebar still not, um, not fully tight so that I can move it around. Feeling good, let's tighten it. You see, this is giving me support. It's looking good. You should also check uh, what will be your access to the brakes when you are going behind your saddle. So on the steep descent, how does it look like? If this was just too low, uh, you wouldn't have uh, some comfortable access to the braking. So check that one as well. I'm happy with this. So this is the order, the left grip. Then I have my lockout, left braking lever. So the front one in Poland at least. Then the shifter to the ridge railer right braking lever and the grip. If there was, and there will be also the dropper post lever, that's ideal if you have your lockout over the handlebars and your uh, drop, uh, drop, dropper post lever below. And that's then it's just the case of what will be the positioning here on the handlebars. But you can push the lever to the dropper post below and to the lockout uh, above. You can also have front derailleur that would make even uh, even uh, more complicated uh, setup here. Uh, but remember, if you have just so many, 
is sometimes you're gonna have like two levers for the lockout. I have a lever and a button. So if you have two levers here, lever for the dropper post and then the front derailleur, then you need to put the lever which you are using the most in the most comfortable position and then the lever which you maybe don't use that often in less comfortable. So try to find some some uh, sweet spot for this. This is ideal setup, 600 millimeters. I'm gonna check it out right now. There will also be some bar ends here, so we'll see if I don't need a little bit more. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. 